You hurt? You're Spider-Man. You're the amazing Spider-Man. You're the spectacular Spider-Man. And a few other choice adjectives Jameson uses. Look, that was really brave. But next time, leave the fighting to the pros, okay? Uh, okay, but what if there aren't any around? Well, you can't just go swinging at someone twice your size. I mean, don't get me wrong. I fight guys stronger than me all the time, but when I do it, I have... Oh, like that time you fought Ryan on the Brooklyn Bridge? That was so awesome. Perfect example. If the other guy's bigger, you gotta be quicker. Okay? Okay, but that's, that's easy for you to say. I, sorry, I just can't do what you do. All right, put him up. Seriously? Yeah, come on. First thing, don't let the adrenaline get to you. Breathe slow, breathe deep, relax. Hip square to your opponent. Let them make the first move. Now use your feet, and when they go off balance, look for an opening. Boom. Like that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, Not only this time, just let me have it. Right on the jock, okay? I can't. <coughs> oh, sh S Sorry. No, no. No, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> you keep that up and uh, you'll be fine. All right, lesson's over. Gotta go. Hey, uh, thanks, you know. Anytime. Just punch Spider-Man. Oh, hey, what a riot! And speaking of riots, here's a bit of civil unrest I cooked up just for you. This video has been a long time coming. It was supposed to be just a quick, you know, month thing where once a week I make a video and uh, it didn't turn out that way. It, for the first two weeks it was pretty alright, pretty solid I think. And then that's when Ish hit the fan. I, uh, I'll say I screwed up. That was all my fault. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about what is better, Spider-Man or the Batman Arkham Trilogy as a whole. And let me just get this out of the way. It's gonna be the Batman Arkham Trilogy. You know? It... It redefined its genre. It went from being a good superhero game to being a good game. But that's not to say it's perfect. If anything... I like Spider-Man PS4 more for different reasons than I would like um, the Batman Arkham games for starters I beat Spider-Man PS4 already and this is more or less letting you guys know there's gonna be tons of spoilers ahead especially towards the end so if you don't want to know any of those the game's been out for about a month now I suggest uh, you don't watch them if again you don't want to know spoilers and when it comes to, in terms of gameplay mechanics and, uh, and graphics and whatnot, I feel like Batman games exceeded for their time. Obviously, Spider-Man PS4 looks great. It looks much better than Arkham Asylum and Arkham City do on PS3. But then you have Arkham Knight. And that game looks phenomenal. That came out in like, what, 2015? The three-year-old game looks, I think, better than Spider-Man PS4. But also, remember when uh, Batman Arkham Remastered was coming out and they were showing video of like comparisons and whatnot, and people preferred the PS3 version for both Arkham Asylum and Arkham Knight, or not Arkham Knight, Arkham City. And that just tells you how good those games, in terms of graphics, held up. Uh, you're just like, wow, those game, those graphics look better on PS3 than they do on PS4. Now, I don't think that's the case, honestly. I think the Arkham Remastered both look great and in ways better. But that's just my opinion. Now, for me, 
the biggest deciding factor when it comes to um, this is isn't about gameplay it isn't about graphics at the end of the day all I care about is story and spider-man ps4 reminds me why spider-man was my favorite character beautiful beautiful story uh, I feel like in some uh, in some parts it was rushed and again this is gonna be your last warning cuz spoilers ahead all right spoilers for the game because I've beaten it so just get out of here if you don't want to hear it but when it comes to uh, villains I feel it was very last minute and not necessarily like I feel like they did have a plan with it but I feel like in ways it was rushed and in ways I feel like that's what exactly what was supposed to oh, it's because one it's one of those things where it's just like you see one of your favorite villains well for me personally my favorite uh, spider-man villain is Kraven the hunter then it's gonna be Mysterio fortunately we don't see those two but we do see like Rhino and Scorpion and Shocker and whatnot and they're honestly barely in the game you just see them for like a quick glance you do a little bit of missions to like lead up to them and then you beat them you beat two of them at once and so that's just like for me like it's more or less like that would make more sense if it was like a cameo or something like in spider-man 2 when you fought the rhino that was just the beginning thing you know you beat him up and that was a cameo more than anything for me, I don't know. I just feel like after a certain uh, like point, those their cameos sh aren't allowed in a way. If that makes sense, like um, Shocker in a way was a cameo. I think because you're just like, oh dang, you know, the Shocker's in the game, and then you know you beat him up, and that's it, you know. And then you have people like um, like uh. Electro, who they don't really allude to prior to like fighting him, he kind of disappears with everybody else at the at the um, the raft. I think it was called the uh, the prison. And I don't know. It's just something I like. I was just like, oh, you know, it's cool. I would have liked more of them or like more screen time with them. But you know, they're not the main focus of the game. I feel like towards the end, uh, when you fight Mr. Negative for the last time, eh, not my cup of tea. Like, if I'm being quite honest, I was just like, eh, you know, just another, like, another game. Mm, like, just another boss battle on this game. Whatever. That keep, keep in mind, I actually really enjoy the boss battles in this game. For some reason, I just really like them because that's how I picture boss battles going like when it comes to spider-man you know I don't see it kind of like in uh, the, at the end of Arkham Asylum where the you know, Joker turns into like this huge gigantic like monster like thing I don't see it going down like that because that's to me way too like fantasy in this world of fantasy you know like that's going above and beyond as in terms at the end of Arkham Asylum, we know what's set. They don't say like, oh, this person cast a magic spell and whatnot and what. And so like, this is what happened and whatnot, you know? So I feel like in a way, it tries to keep some realism to the to the series with Batman. But but then I, I just, it just lost me when it came down to um the Joker boss battle. When it comes to Arkham City though, we all know we all know which battle I'm talking about. Probably one of the best in a video game. And solid. I'm not going to say which one because if you guys are real Arkham City fans or fans of the the series, you know exactly which battle I'm talking about. The battles in Arkham Knight terrible. They were ass. I did not like any of them. But not Spider-Man PS4. High praise from me for those boss battles. Even though I do think not enough screen time or in ways they feel felt a little rushed. 
um, solid overall. Big fan of them. Now, one thing that really like spoke to me when I was a uh, playing Spider-Man is he is a hero of tragedy if you th okay superman is my favorite superhero now before it used to be spider-man the reason i didn't like spider-man or i liked him and then stopped is because of the writer dan slot if i'm being honest i just it it, it wasn't for me. I'm not gonna say it was bad or like it was terrible. It just wasn't for me and When they said Dan Slott was gonna be a writer on here I was just like a little hesitant because I'm not the biggest fan of him You know, I was at first, but that was just me liking spider-man, but not his writing He wrote some good stories. Don't get me wrong But it's just like uh, one of the last runs I read of his I was not a fan of and uh, Batman Arkham got Paul Dini for the first two. Arkham uh, Asylum and Arkham City. If you, if I'm being quite honest, the story for those two aren't very good, and I feel like they might be a little overrated. If I'm being quite honest. And the same goes for Arkham Knight. People say that that's a good story when I firmly believe that it's not. I think it goes Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight in terms of story. And the reason I liked Arkham Asylum was kind of like the simplicity of it. It's like, oh, okay, here I am. It's one location. Now we gotta figure out what to do, you know? Like, Joker took over and now Batman's basically left like, like, in his, it's just bare bones, you know? Just whatever he has, he has. And he doesn't want to leave this island because he knows if he leaves, even for like an hour, it could be chaos. And Batman doesn't want that, but but it also feels like in Arkham City, he could leave if he wants. Even though, like, it's secure and, like, the most... Like, the heaviest security, like, in Gotham or whatever is, like, right there. And, like, no one can escape and whatnot. It didn't really feel like that to me. It felt like... It felt like... He... It felt like too many cooks type thing. It felt like Batman could have could have left whenever he wanted to, but didn't for no real reason. Really, like he could have gone to his back cave, worn like some crazy armor, then went in and like defeated everybody. But like he made it harder on himself. But back to the too many cooks thing, I went to really quick. Too many villains. I feel like. Too many side plots. You had Bane, Rachel Ghoul, you had uh, Mr. Freeze, Penguin, Two Face. We, you had like all these villains where it's just like not my cup of tea. You know, like it's just they kind of like the only exception I would have said is like Two Face because he's in the beginning and then that's it for for Batman. You know, you like, you already beat him up and he's of no like use to you anymore. You're not there for him. Then you have like Clayface and whatnot, which again, I feel like it's too many cooks. And they all kind of like intertwine with the main story, which is Hugo Strain and Rachel Cool, and it's just. In my opinion, it's too convoluted. Not it, it. It didn't work for me, and I don't blame anybody. You know, like it's kind of like okay, where do we go from here? Type thing, and you know, they kind of dug themselves into a hole just after the first one for trying to like. They're like, all right, Arkham Asylum. 
let's call the next one Arkham City, and they already limited themselves in in a way, you know. And I feel like when it comes to Spider-Man, sky's the limit. They could do whatever it is they want with the next Spider-Man game. You know, maybe he can travel to a different part of New York. You know, just a, a different island. Heck, they can keep it on the same island if they really wanted to and just change the story. They don't have to keep it the way it is now. Or it's just, like, rinse and repeat. And that's just me. But when it comes to story, hands down, it goes to, to Spider-Man PS4. Now, you might be asking yourself, you're just like... Well, you seem to be praising Spider-Man PS4 a lot and bashing the, the Arkham trilogy. What what makes it any better? Why are you saying no? That Spider-Man doesn't beat the three. Again, um... Like, Arkham... The Arkham games broke the trope of superhero games are mediocre at best. The only standout game that was like good with Spider-Man 2. And that was one of those games where it's a solid game. Not just a solid superhero game or a solid movie game. And it's just because of like kind of like a, the legacy behind the Arkham games, you know. For like in a way doing like what couldn't be done and like paving the way. It's basically because it's the godfather of like of uh, superhero games, I think that's why I'm giving it to it, like giving it to the uh, gear better type thing. I don't know; it could just be me. But those games are solid, solid games. Action is amazing, especially in Arkham Knight. When I, at first I thought it was, it was a little too much, but it works. Replaying it. When I was playing Arkham Asylum, it was tough when I first started, but I but I was able to pull through and beat the game with uh, that kind of combat. It was a lot more complicated than I originally thought. And when it comes to like Arkham City, I think that's when it really perfected it. It really knew how to handle combat and stealth and ev like everything. That's when it really knew, like, all right, we perfected everything. And but with Arkham Knight, that's when they were just like, we perfected everything, but we still want to add a little more. So in some ways, it did feel like a little bit like, like unnecessary, but that doesn't really matter. Still solid action. Graphics for Arkham Knight, I think, are better than Spider-Man PS4, if I'm being quite honest. And... For, for me, really, uh, Batman Arkham games are all strong points and like everything but story. And for me personally, what Spider-Man PS4 has over the Arkham trilogy is a story. This one story on Spider-Man destroyed the Batman Arkham games. They were paced very well, I think, except towards the end, specifically with Mr. Negative. He just, I don't know, just didn't really care for him at the end of the game. With the other ones, I'm fine with, you know, it was satisfying enough to where I'm just like, gonna let it pass. And with uh, Bat the Batman games, it didn't really feel like that. So for me, story is the biggest thing. You know, story and, uh, like, dialogue and whatnot. But when it comes to dialogue... There's only one person who holds that crown, and it's because of this line. The coldest line I have ever heard Batman say, and definitely my favorite. Talk! Don't make me crack your skull and look for the answers inside. Now talk! The right choice. Well... Let me just tell you that when I first heard that, my jaw had dropped. I, I was like, 
What? Batman said something like that or it's so violent but at the same time it's like so like you believe what he's gonna say like what he's gonna do when he's just like oh like he's gonna crack my skull open and look for the answers inside oh my god perfect like I'm speechless still thinking about how good that line is that one line, for me, just go, ah, oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, but enough of that, <laughs> enough about that, let's get, let's get back to the needy greedy and why, uh, Spider-Man PS4, I mean, look, he went up against Dr. Octopus, and they had been building him up for the whole game. The one thing I really wasn't a fan of is, like, I kind of thought Dr. Octopus would know, like, immediately that he's Spider-Man because, spoilers, in the game he kind of sees the Spider-Man suit and, like, right there and he, like, in Peter's bag and he's like, oh, you're helping Spider-Man and I'm like, nah, he, just look at him, like, homeboy, like, clearly works out and whatnot, like, he is Spider-Man, you know? That was just me. And then, it, the constant buildup was great, except when they're just like, oh, he, he's a little crazy, and, uh, and that's how he became Dr. Octopus. I'm like, really? Okay, you're just gonna say, like, his body's giving out, and so is his mind? Alright, you know, like, you do you. But I wasn't sold on that. I thought that was kind of a cop-out. Same with, like, in the Spider-Man uh, movie. They kind of did that, but at the same time, like, still a solid freaking movie. It's a good movie. And, you know, you, you get a lot of emotional scenes like, like this right here that you don't get in Batman. And that's something where you need emotion to really pull a game. Look at... Uh, if you look at our, our uh, Uncharted series... The first three are like really like visually pleasing, but then in the fourth one, that's when you have like like the Nathan's marriage is like it could be like ruined. You find out he had a brother that like was almost dead. Like you had like all these like crazy crazy things, and you also have The Last of Us where they do like. They pull on emotion, you know, where it's just like, these are like, st like things people would actually do. And, and like, uh, one of my favorite lines from Uncharted was, you know, when she's just, uh, when he's, uh, when he gets caught by, uh, I forget her, his wife's name, but he gets caught and he's just like, I can quit when, uh, like whenever I want. And then she's just like, uh, I know you're. Uh, you're done lying to me, but are you done lying to yourself? You know, you have like things like that where it's just like you realize realize these people are human, you know, and you don't really get that in Batman. I don't think they tried to in Arkham City, but didn't really work out in my opinion. With the Talia Al Ghul thing, another character that was there where, bah, like, I get rid of. I don't want, you know, but that's just me. The Arkham. They try to do okay. It, I will say it did. It was a little bit successful with with Jason Todd. But that's really it. You can't look back at those games and really tell me that it had like emotional parts. You can't really tell me. Look back. You can really look back at those games and say they were like good story games. But you can look back at those games and say that they were good. still viable. We'll need the entire sample as a base to produce more doses. How long will that take? A few hours. Maybe a day. What if we use it to cure someone right now? Then there won't be enough to cure the others. Well, 
I'll give you a few minutes. You're gonna be okay, ma'am. I've got the cure right here. Take off your mask. I want to see my nephew. You knew? I've known for a while. I never wanted you to worry. I did. And I am so proud of you. And Ben would be too. All the people you've saved. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs>